One more topic on uh, our little math review, and that's proportionalities. Okay, a lot of the math we do in this course is not going to be, in fact, solving equations, but rather figuring out proportionalities. In other words, a proportionality is where you have an equation where one quantity depends on a bunch of other quantities. But let's say you only want to tweak one knob on this side of the equation. In fact, it's kind of like a complex sound system where you have a bunch of uh, sliders and a bunch of knobs. Well, in my, my day we had knobs and stuff like that. But you have a, a bunch of things you can change to, to change the sound coming out of the speakers. Okay. Well, a proportionality is kind of like what happens to the overall sound if you only tweak one of those sliders or one of those knobs. Um, that's what a proportionality is. Let me give you an example. We had an equation in the last segment uh, where time was equal to distance over speed, distance divided by speed. In fact, I'm going to write it out now. Time is equal to distance divided by speed. Okay. <coughs> That's an equation. So if I plug in distance and speed, I can figure out time. Or if I know time and distance, I can change it around so I can figure out speed. But what if I know how these two quantity, how these three quantities relate to each other? But what if I only change one of these things? Okay. So for example, the time of travel to somewhere depends on two things. Depends on distance and speed. If you increase the distance, let's say you double the distance. Let's say you have two places you want to go. You have New York and you have Washington, D.C. Okay. Now, I don't know off the top of my head how the distances compare. But I'm just going to say, let's say, for example, that you happen to know that Washington is three times the distance. So Washington, D.C. is three times the distance from East Stroudsburg as New York City. Well, if it's three times the distance, how much time is it going to take you? Well, it's going to take you three times the time. So if you know the time that it takes to get to New York, and you know that Washington is three times the distance, and assuming, what you're assuming here is that your speed is going to be about the same, okay? That you're connected by similar kinds of roads so that it's not going to be, you know, small side streets going down to Washington, D.C., but major highways. So if you assume that the speed is going to be about the same for both trips, then three times the distance would be three times the time. That's what we call a direct proportion. We say that as long as the speed remains the same, that time is proportional to distance. And time is proportional to distance. So if you have three times the distance, it'll take you three times as long. If you have twice the distance, it'll take you twice as long. If you only have half the distance, it'll only take half as long. Okay? So whatever, however this quantity changes, however much you change this quantity, this quantity will change proportionally. It'll change by the same factor. Okay? So this is what we call a direct proportion. A direct proportion is where quantity A is proportional to quantity B. And this little fish-shaped symbol means proportional to. Okay? It says that basically if B changes, A changes by the same factor, by the same proportion. Okay. So if B changes by 10, A would change by 10. If B is cut to one third, A would change to one third as much. Okay, so that's a direct proportion. All right. How about though, if instead of the speed remaining the same, the distance remains the same? Okay. Let's say you're going to have a road race, or uh, you know, or let's say you run cross country. Okay? You have to run the same distance. How are you going to reduce your time? Well, you reduce your time by increasing your speed. Right? So if the distance is the same, then you say that time 
is inversely proportional to speed. Okay. But notice that speed is in the denominator here on the right hand side. You're dividing by speed. So whenever you increase your speed, it means you're dividing by a bigger number. Whenever you divide by a bigger number, you get a smaller number. Okay? If, you know, one divided by a thousand is a bigger number than one divided by a million. All right? So whenever the number on the bottom gets bigger here, the number on this side gets smaller. Everybody inherently knows this. I know this because people are driving way too fast on the roads. Okay? And the reason is because of this equation here. They want to get there as fast as possible. They want to reduce their time of travel. So they increase their speed, sometimes to unsafe levels, to reduce the time needed to get from here to there. Okay? So the speed goes up, the time goes down. Okay? This is called an inverse proportion. Okay? An inverse proportion A is inversely proportional to B, which says that if B changes, then A changes by the inverse, or here's a word you may not have heard since like ninth or 10th grade algebra, the reciprocal. So in other words, if B tripled, A would be reduced to one-third. If B doubled, then A would be cut to one-half. So whenever B gets bigger, A gets smaller. On the other hand, if B got smaller, if B were one-half as much, A would be one divided by one-half, which would be two times as much. So if you divide by a smaller number, you get a bigger number. Okay. So that's proportions and inverse proportions. So we're going to be doing a lot of that in this class where you have proportionalities and inverse proportions.